In a year ago this month, Governor Kristi Noem fired top officials at the state penitentiary in Sioux Falls and replaced the Secretary of Corrections after getting an anonymous complaint that included allegations of sexual harassment, nepotism, poor pay, and bad equipment. Three months ago, a review of the Department of Corrections was complete and indicated the need for better safety, less turnover, and the need to deal with issues of harassment and a hostile work environment. Now, in tonight's Kelloland News investigation, Angela Kennecke looks into just how much has been done to resolve the issues that she has exposed for years in our prisons and has an interview with a whistleblower who says prison promises were not kept. Brandon Bell Savage started working as a correctional officer at the state penitentiary in 2019. I've always had a liking to law enforcement or corrections. Six months into the job, an inmate attacked him. An inmate grabbed me by the neck and started stabbing me in the, in, in the face right, right here, closer to my, my artery right here. If it would have been a half inch down or a quarter inch down, I, I would be dead right now. Bell Savage says it was the prison's lack of following basic safety protocol that put him in the situation in the first place. And it is a dangerous job, and that can happen at any time. But how this happened, I was going up, open the door. The doors are supposed to be secure. They were not. Ball Savage's attacker, Alan Janis, who is serving a 20 year sentence for armed robbery, pleaded guilty to attempted murder in the incident and was sentenced to another 50 years. Janice had a history of violence behind bars. In 2014, Janice pleaded guilty to sliming or assault by an inmate. Nothing changed after that day. With the doors being closed, they enforced that for about two months, and then to this day, those doors are still open. Following the attack, Ball Savage left his job, only to return a couple of months later. He was hopeful when he heard Governor Nome was making changes. Nome had a sit down with us. She, she talked about everything that's going on, what she wants to change. Nome spoke at a July 2021 news conference about her meeting with staff in Sioux Falls. I was very clear in the other room that everybody's being evaluated, every single person, and especially those in leadership. And just here at this facility or throughout? Throughout the Department of Corrections. Several people in leadership positions were ousted. State Penitentiary Warden Darren Young was replaced by Dan Sullivan. Ball Savage liked him right away. I think that is the one positive thing is having someone that's being up front. That's the one positive change is getting a new leadership in here. But Bell Savage says one of the hot button issues, sexual harassment, something Warden Young was accused of, is still happening. Sexual harassment is still a big problem, mainly on our overnights. Bell Savage claims that instead of reporting it, officers in charge just move people to different areas of the prison. They're not going to forget the promises that were made. Eric Olala is executive director of the South Dakota State Employees Association, which is a voluntary association for state workers. So the governor coming in and saying, I'm going to do this, we're going to replace the top brass, isn't enough? It's, it's not enough. I mean, again, there, there, there needs to be action after the words. They need to feel that the goals were met, um, that the promises were kept. Ball Savage says correctional officers are not getting self-defense training. And this year, nobody got that defensive tactic training. Even the new people coming in didn't get the defensive tactics because they didn't want to put on the class. In her letter to lawmakers addressing the prison review, Department of Corrections Secretary Kelly Wasco says the DOC was addressing equipment needs by procuring appropriate ballistic vests and addressing equipment needs by ordering enough right-hand and left-hand gun holsters. However, Ball Savage says there still isn't enough of either one to go around and points to a time when he had to use the wrong gun holster to transport an inmate to court. I can't do anything with left hand because that's a risk to everybody else. I'm not trained in a left hand belt so I can't use that and I'm forced to use that. The employees are at their wits end. Their conditions are getting so restrictive. The system is frayed and I mean it's about ready to break. Lives are at stake. High turnover and staff shortages continue to plague South Dakota's prisons. If you look at individual facilities, the South Dakota Women's Prison has nearly a third or 29 percent of its positions open. The employee turnover rate at the Women's Prison is approaching 58 percent. If you have turnover around 60 percent, your working conditions are going to be pretty terrible. At the penitentiary in Sioux Falls, more than 22 percent of positions are going unfilled. And the turnover rate is nearly 30 percent. Kettleban Investigates has learned that has led to changes in vacation policies for correctional officers. 
it's really up to the state if they're going to get that time off. Tops were blown amongst the employees when this new policy came out. Each time they get more desperate and then to get a job somewhere else. To try to prevent that, the DOC bumped its starting pay for correctional officers from $17.89 an hour to $20 per hour and offers a $1,500 bonus if someone stays for a full two years. This same job at the Minnehaha County Jail pays $23 an hour and $24 for those working the night shift, plus a $4,000 bonus if they work for three years in the jail. It's ludicrous for you to stay with the state when you can go to the county and make more money. Ball Savage says shortages have resulted in certain security stations known as pods not being staffed. There has been multiple occasions where they have been unmanned for an entire night. The thing that controls the whole unit has been unmanned for an entire night. We asked the Department of Corrections about that and received a statement saying that the DOC has several mandatory security posts throughout each facility that are manned at all times. A lot of people are fatigued. They hit their limit. If we don't take this seriously, this is going to result in what happened in 2011. That's the year correctional officer Ron Johnson was killed in a failed prison escape. Ball Savage says he resigned in hopes of preventing that from happening to someone else. And you can't talk unless you quit. Yes, I, I, I'm scared of retaliation. I'm scared they would step out, they would do something. I want a lot of this stuff to change. I want people to know what's going on. I want the truth out there. And you're worried things could get worse. Yes. That's why you left? Yes. Bell Salvage sent a letter to everyone in the Department of Corrections outlining the problems he discussed with us here. We've posted it for you to read on this story on Kettleland.com. Now, I asked DOC Secretary Wasco for an on-camera interview to get her response for this story, but I was denied. I did get a written statement, which said in part that the DOC has made major changes in the last year and has more in the works, including several security upgrades and safety gear enhancements. But the DOC recognizes there is more work to do. We've posted the rest of the DOC's response on this story on Kettleland.com.